हेलो एवरी वन टूडे वी डिस्कस अब द स्ट्रक्चर इन द एंटीरियर मीडियम रीजन ऑफ द नेक ना फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस इज द एंटीरियर मीडियम व्यू ऑफ द नेक नाउ अदर्स फॉर ईज एंड कन्वीनियंस लेट डिस्कस अब सम ऑफ द मेन इंपॉर्टेंट मसल एंड द बोन लोकेशन इन द एंटीरियर मीडियम रीजन ऑफ द नेक सो इट विल बी ईजर फॉर यू टू फॉर द गोइंग डिटेल अबाउट दिस ना फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस इज द जॉ बोन और द मैंडीबुलर बोन दिस इज द हर्ट बोन दिस इज द थर्ड कार्टिल ऑफ लेरिंग्स दिस इज द क्रिकॉर्ड कार्टिलेज राइट नाउ ओवर हियर This is the mylohyoid muscle. Now about this mylohyoid muscle, we are having the anterior belly and the posterior belly digastric connected by a pulley on the hyoid bone. Now when we remove this mylohyoid muscle, we will so we will see actually two main muscle also, genohyoid and the stylohyoid. Okay. Now the, now this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is a SCM having two insertion on the sternum and on the clavicle. Okay. Now Uh, this is the this over here is the sternohyoid muscle. Below this there will be sternothyroid muscle, and this is the thyrohyoid muscle, and this is the omohyoid muscle. This is the omohyoid muscle, this one, and this is the superior belly, and then this is the inferior belly of omohyoid muscle. This is the thyroid gland. Okay, now very important thing. First of all, the uh, features of this. Now this region, this anterior median region of the neck is actually uh, extended from the chin to the sternum. And remember that uh, first of all, the first layer, of course, it will be the skin. Now remember the skin of this anterior median region or the anterior region of the neck is actually freely movable over the deeper structure present deep to it because of the looseness of the superficial fascia. Now the superficial fascia of the anterior region of the neck actually mainly contains mainly four things. Remember, first of all, it is the platysma. This this is the platysma muscle of the neck. In the superficial fascia of the anterior region of the neck, platysma muscle. Now, next is the anterior jugular vein. This is the anterior jugular vein. Okay. Now, this vein actually begins in the submental region below the chin. This is the submental region of the neck. So, it begins over here. It actually descends downwards. Okay. Goes downwards about one centimeter from the median plane. Okay, this is a median plane, and this will go downwards one centimeter from the median plane, and will go downward and about two point five centimeter above the sternum. Okay, this will actually connect or form a loop along with the fellow anterior jugular vein. Okay, by the transverse channel, and will form the jugular venous arch. Remember, this anterior jugular vein will actually uh, begins at the submental triangle, one centimeter uh, from the median plane. Okay, it will go downward, descend downward, and about two point five centimeter of the sternum, it will unite with the fellow anterior jugular vein of the opposite side, and will form the jugular venous arch. Now, as you can see over here, this vein again goes on the lateral side, deep under the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay, and actually ends in the external jugular vein, at the posterior border of the SCM muscle. Right. Now, next is the small. Various submental lymph nodes somewhere over here. There will be submental lymph nodes, and uh, also remember transverse or the anterior cutaneous nerve of the neck are also present. Okay, so four things: platysma muscle. This is a platysma muscle. Then this anterior jugular vein and the jugular venous arch. Then the submental lymph node, and remember one nerve that is the anterior or transverse cutaneous nerve of the neck in the superficial fascia of the neck. Now next is the deep fascia of the neck. Now, uh, just for easier and a uh, better convenient study, we will divide this deep fascia of the neck into three main regions. That means above the hyoid bone, between the hyoid bone and the cricoid cartilage, and below this cricoid cartilage. Now, first of all, above the hyoid bone. Now, remember above the hyoid bone. Just look at this diagram for this above the hyoid bone. Now, uh, this is the skin, then the superficial fascia, and then the deep fascia. And the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia of the neck is actually. A single uh, layer in the median plane of the neck. Okay, as you can see, it is actually single layer only in the median region of the neck. But on the sides, it will splits into two layer and will enclose the submandibular salivary gland. So remember, above the hyoid bone, the investing layer of the deep fascia of the neck will be single layer in the median plane, where it will divide into uh, two main layers at the side and will enclose submandibular salivary gland. Now between the hyoid bone and the cricoid cartilage. This uh, investing layer or the deep deep fascia of the neck will actually will be a single layer only extending from this uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle to this sternocleidomastoid muscle. 
so in short uh, there will be a single layer extending between the right and the left SCM muscle now below this cricoid cartilage remember this the fascia the deep fascia actually splits to enclose the suprasternal region of the neck the neck is a structure lying above the heart bone and the structure lying below the heart bone so now first of all structure lying above the heart bone now first of all remember this is the mylohyoid muscle this is the mylohyoid muscle above the heart bone now some of the structure actually overlap this mylohyoid muscle that is first of all as you can see clearly the anterior belly of digastric muscle okay and also submandibular salivary gland this is the submandibular salivary gland over here this now first of all this is the inner view of your mouth and as you can see this is the submandibular salivary gland so superficial part of the submandibular salivary gland will actually overlap the anterior view of this mylohyoid muscle of the neck right now next is the mylohyoid nerve and vessel this is the mylohyoid nerve and vessels now this mylohyoid uh, nerves are actually a branch of the inferior alveolar nerves now this inferior alveolar nerve is actually a branch of the mandibular nerve and further the mandibular nerve is a branch of trigeminal nerve so trigeminal nerve gives mandibular nerve mandibular nerve gives, gives inferior alveolar nerves and the lingual nerve and this inferior alveolar nerve will further give the nerve to mylohyoid and the fourth thing is the submental branch of the facial arteries now the fourth thing we actually overlaps the mylohyoid muscle are digastric then over here the submandibular salivary gland artery and the nerve to mylohyoid and the fourth one is the submental branch of the facial artery now next is the hyoglossus muscle now this is the hyoglossus muscle now the entero inferior part of the hyoglossus muscle with the superficial relation may also be exposed during the resection and what are the relations over here two main relations that means this the tendon of the digastric muscle and the pulley of the digastric muscle and second very important is the bifurcated tendon of the stylohyoid muscle embracing the digastric tendon and one more important structure is the subhyoid bursa now what is this bursa this bursa actually is this one it lies between the posterior border of the heart bone and the thyrohyoid membrane now the main importance of this subhyoid bursa is that it lessens and uh, reduces the friction between these two structures during the movements of the swallowing so three main important structures over here mylohyoid and the, the structure that overlaps it the four structure this uh, digastric tendon and uh, over here the submandibular salivary gland the nerve to mylohyoid and the artery and also the submental artery of the facial artery next is the hyoglossus and the structure over, over here mainly to remember the tendon and the pulley of the digastric muscle and uh, the stylohyoid muscle and the third thing is the subhyoid bursa now next is structure lying below the heart bone up till now the structure was above the heart bone now below the heart bone now we uh, now here as you can see will uh, the structure in this region will divide this region into mainly three planes that is the superficial plane middle plane and the deep plane the superficial plane actually contains the infrahyoid muscles what, what are the infrahyoid muscles they are mainly Four. That means the sternum hair. As you can see over this, this is the sternum hair muscle. Uh, when we we'll cut this sternum hair muscle, we will get the sternum thyroid muscle. Then next is the thyrohyoid muscle, and next is the omohyoid muscle, and the two superior belly of omohyoid muscle. So remember, we are having the four main infrahyoid muscle at the superficial plane, uh, at the structure below the hair bone are four hair, four infrahyoid muscle. That is. Sternohyoid, sternothyroid, thyrohyoid, and the omohyoid superior belly. Now next is the middle plane. Now in the middle plane we have mainly two structures that means the pretracheal fascia of the deep cervical fascia of the neck and the thyroid gland. Now remember the pretracheal fascia actually forms two main important things that means the false capsule of the thyroid gland and the suspensive ligament of Berry. Now this suspensive ligament of Berry actually connects the thyroid gland with the cricoid cartilage and as because of this attachment only whenever you deglutinate something okay whenever you swallow something your thyroid gland also moves along with the swelling or deglutinating process why because of the attachment of the thyroid gland by the by the cricoid cartilage of the larynx by the means of the suspensory ligament of berry now next is the deep plane now in the deep plane we are first of all having the thyrohyoid membrane 
will actually lies deep to this thyroid muscle. Okay, and this thyroid membrane is actually pierced by remember two main structures. That means the internal laryngeal nerve and the superior laryngeal artery. Now next is the thyroid cartilage. Next is the cricothyroid membrane. Now this cricothyroid membrane is actually uh, on its surface there is anastomosis of the cricothyroid arteries. Now next is the cricothyroid muscle itself. Now this cricothyroid muscle actually, remember is actually supplied by the external laryngeal nerve. And then next is the cricoid cartilage itself. And lastly we have mainly two things that is the trachea and the keratin sheet. So remember we have mainly seven things present in the deep plane. That means first of all thyroid membrane. Then the thyroid cartilage, cricothyroid membrane, cricothyroid muscle, cricoid cartilage and the trachea and the keratin sheet. Seven things in the deep plane. Now the clinical aspect of the anterior region of the neck. Now first of all the common anterior midline swelling. Now this swelling actually occurs because of the following reason. It may be because of the goiter or the carcinoma of the larynx or it may be because of the Enlargement of the submental lymph nodes present over here in the submental triangle or submental region of the neck or because of the inflammation of the subhyoid bursa. Okay, so because of this all reasons, any one of them, there may be swelling in the midline of the neck of the anterior region. Now next the tracheostomy. Now tracheostomy is an operation in which the trachea is opened and a tube inserted into it to facilitate the breathing mechanism. Now it is very important and uh, most commonly done in the retrothyroid region. Retrothyroid region remember after retracting the uh, isthmus of the thyroid gland. Now suprathyroid tracheostomy is more liable to stricture and infrathyroid one is difficult. Why? Because due to the depth of the trachea and also one more important reason is that uh, the infrathyroid uh, uh, tracheostomy is dangerous because numerous vessels lie anterior to your trachea in the infrathyroid region. So mainly suprathyroid and the retrothyroid processes are done in this tracheostomy. Now the cut wounds of the throat. Now the cut wounds of the throat are most commonly situated just above the heart bone or just below the heart bone. Now the main vessels of the neck usually escape in this injury. Why? Because they are pushed backwards to a deeper plane during the involuntary extension of the neck when the neck is about to be get injured. So because of this in because of this voluntary extension of the neck, whatever the vessels are present in the neck are actually goes in the deeper structure and they are actually safeguard from getting injured. Now next is the Langer's line. Now these are the Langer's line as you can see. Now the skin incisions to be made parallel to the natural scissors or the Langer's line. Normally incisions are done along this line only by the surgeons for surgery purpose. And last is the Ludwig's angina. Ludwig's angina as you can see is the cellulitis of the floor of the mouth. The infection spreads above the myelohyoid muscle forcing the tongue upwards. Right. And the myelohyoid is pushed downwards. Remember the, because, of the, uh, because of the spreading of the infection above the myelohyoid, the tongue is pushed upward and the myelohyoid is pushed downwards. Now there is swelling within the mouth as well as below the chin as in this patient. Right. So this was all about the entire median region of the neck. Hope you understood it well. Thank you so much.